The big phone problem, am I right? Uh, sorry, not the big phone problem, but the big phone problem. I may sound a bit confusing. Let me give you an example. So you're walking down the street, not a care in the world, and it might be a rainy day, so you're holding an umbrella in one hand, or maybe it's a sunny day and you're holding, I don't know, your sunscreen, and all of a sudden you get a notification on your phone. So you pull it out and you have to tap somewhere high up on the screen and, uh, yeah, the big phone problem. There are a lot of things to consider in UX design, and at least in my opinion, reachability should be a pretty important priority. And in case you're wondering why I feel that way, well, just imagine a company losing a potential user base just because the designers put all the important things way too high up on the screen, and a bunch of people thought, you know what, why bother? Life's too short, and apparently, so are my fingers. So how do contemporary smartphone operating systems stand when it comes to reachability? particularly on the Plus, Max, and Ultra devices. We'll see in just a second. In fact, if you want to jump straight to that part, you can do so by clicking on the corresponding chapter in the video player. But first, I want to quickly talk about how people actually use their phones, or more specifically, how they hold them. In a study posted on UX Matters, UX design expert Steven Huber observed and recognized three basic ways people hold and tap on their phones. The first is the one-handed way, where people hold their phones with one hand and tap with their thumb, which can be positioned either lower or higher on the screen. The second is by holding the phone with one hand and using the other for tapping. Huber calls this the cradle position, where input is most commonly done either with the thumb or the index finger. And finally, the third is by holding the phone with two hands, either in portrait or landscape mode, while using both thumbs to provide input. The diagrams on the illustrations represent approximate reach charts where green is used for an area a user can reach easily, yellow for an area that requires a stretch, and red for an area that requires users to change the way they're holding a device, which by the way happens a lot. People rarely hold their phones in just one way, but are rather constantly shifting positions depending on what they're actually doing and where they need to reach. Now, the big phone problem doesn't really apply when you're shifting between cradled and two-handed positions. I mean, you probably got a bigger phone for more enjoyable media consumption, a bigger battery, maybe even some extra productivity options, and you know what you got yourself into. However, those situations when you have to use just one hand will always be there. So let's see what major smartphone manufacturers do to mitigate the problem. Now, since I'm not someone like MKBHD or Mr. Who's the Boss, and I don't have like a gazillion phones just lying around my place, I'm gonna have to make use of what I do have. Luckily, two of the three devices I have just so happen to be made by manufacturers who lead the global smartphone market share charts. So first we have Apple's iPhone 12 Pro Max running the latest version of iOS 14 that is available to this specific unit. And this is most certainly a large phone, as I already established in a previous video. Then we have the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus running One UI 3. And finally, since I also have a Google Pixel 2 XL lying around, I decided to throw it in the video as well just so we can see what one-handed use is like on a device running the latest stable version of Android in its vanilla form. We'll start off by looking at what I like to think of as the basic navigation triad, which includes home screen, background apps, and back navigation. On iPhones that do not have a physical home button, iOS 14 utilizes a gesture system for navigation where swiping up from the bottom edge takes you to the home screen, and swiping up and then pausing for a moment brings up cards for apps that are running in the background, and going through them is just a simple matter of swiping left or right and then tapping on one. In addition to that, you can also switch between apps by swiping sideways on the bottom edge. Now, all of this is perfectly optimized for one-handed use, even on a large phone like the 12 Pro Max. So if you're holding the phone with one hand and your thumb is positioned over the bottom of the screen like this, the gestures required to go home or switch between apps are at its reach. But things can get a bit trickier when it comes to back navigation because as it turns out, iOS 14 doesn't really have a universal back gesture. Swiping from the left edge does work in most menus and apps, but not in all of them. For example, it doesn't seem to work in a lot of Google apps, so in that case you have to reach way up here in order to tap on the in-app back button. And this is physically impossible to do without shifting positions or engaging in some gnarly finger acrobatics, unless of course you have a freakishly long thumb. You could also do this and reach the back button much easier, 
but more about that a bit later when we get to dedicated one-handed features. On the Android side of things, home navigation and switching between running apps works just like it does on the iPhone. So you swipe up from the bottom edge to go home and swipe up and pause for background apps. You can also swipe left or right on the bottom edge to quickly switch between the apps. However, back navigation is different and much more convenient because swiping from either the left or right edge always takes you one step back until you eventually reach the home screen. And this works the same on One UI 3 and pure Android 11. Now, Android also has the good old navigation bar, which makes it so that these functions are always at your thumb's reach, and a lot of people actually still prefer this type of navigation over the gesture system. But regardless of which system you prefer, I'd say Android does a pretty good job in making sure that basic navigation is always at your thumb's reach, and I don't even think that people with smaller hands should have too much trouble there. Now, when it comes to quick settings and notifications, iOS 14 actually has two separate menus, panels, or however you want to call them. Swiping down from the top left or center brings down the notification center, while swiping down from the top right brings down the control center. Now, this is pretty much impossible to do if you're using only one hand, especially on the 12 Pro Max. And unless you're okay with stretching your thumb and risking your phone slipping out of your hand, you'll certainly need to shift to something like the cradle position. However, iOS 14 does come with a nifty accessibility feature that allows you to assign specific functions to a rear double tap and or rear triple tap. Now, there's a whole bunch of different functions you can choose from here, but if you go for the notification and control centers, it makes the process of bringing down those menus much easier during one-handed use. And again, yes, you can also do this, but like I said, we'll get to that in just a sec. On the Android side, quick settings and notifications are bundled up in one panel, which can also be difficult to bring down using just one hand. But Android has a great feature that allows you to bring it down simply by swiping down from anywhere on the home screen. Now on Samsung, you'll notice how the buttons are sort of pushed down so that they're easier to reach. And this is actually a reoccurring theme throughout One UI 3. You'll also notice this in the settings, messages, clock app, etc. So again, very well optimized for one-handed use. One of the things that Android gets a lot of praise for are its customization options. And one thing that we often take for granted when it comes to customization is the ability to move icons anywhere we want. So if you have certain apps that you use more often than others, you can place them lower on the screen and make it so that they're always at your thumb's reach. And this is especially useful if you have a larger phone. iOS, on the other hand, still hasn't caught up in this department. Icons will always arrange in the first available spot from the top down. So the only way of having your most used apps in the bottom rows is to push them down with a bunch of other ones on the top or by taking advantage of the fact that iOS now has widgets and putting one or two of those on the upper half of the screen. And now let's talk about dedicated one-handed options. And by that, I mean options that bring the entire user interface or parts of it to a reachable position. Now, iOS 14 has a reachability option that, when enabled, allows you to swipe down on the bottom edge to bring the top part of the screen into a reachable position. And this is something that is extremely useful, especially on such a big phone like the 12 Pro Max. Also, iOS has a one-handed keyboard option that allows you to pin the entire keyboard either to the left or right side, and again, extremely useful in those situations when you're using your phone with only one hand. Now, on One UI 3, you can swipe down in the center of the bottom edge of the screen in order to scale down the entire UI, and then you can snap it to one of the four corners of the screen. Now, there doesn't appear to be anything similar on pure Android 11, I'm not aware whether this is available to newer models of the Pixel or not, however, there is a one-handed option available for Gboard and it allows you to push the keyboard to the left or right, similar to what we already saw on the iPhone. And by the way, you can find a similar option on the Samsung keyboard as well. In conclusion, yeah, using a large phone with only one hand can get a bit tricky at times, but you already know that. And if you have already decided to get one, then that's probably not going to change your mind. 
Luckily, as we were able to see, manufacturers do put in place several options that make these devices easier to handle. Some of them could do more, but for now it is what it is, and it's certainly not terrible. However, there is another big phone problem that could be a topic for a whole nother video, and that is poor use of space. If I compare the Galaxy S21 Plus with something like the Galaxy S10, the larger phone obviously does have better hardware, but since both phones are running the same OS, the user experience is practically the same. Now, this really isn't that big of an issue on Samsung phones because One UI has some very useful multitasking options like split screen and pop-up view, as do most other variants of Android, of course, so they do a pretty good job in utilizing space on both compact and larger phones. But then we have iOS. iOS is also known for offering a similar user experience across different devices, but since it lacks features like split screen mode, or the ability to have more than four apps in a row on your home screen, using a larger iPhone, like the 12 Pro Max, makes you feel like a lot of good space is going to waste. Reachability may or may not be an issue for you, but when considering buying a big phone, you might want to ask yourself, do you really need all that extra space if you can't really do anything extra with it? But like I said, that's a topic for a whole nother video. I really hope you found this one useful, and if you did, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It would be much appreciated. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, stay strong. Thank you.